then again, because we don't have a tilt table, we're just going to do a stand test. Um, what we would normally do is Jade would be supine for um, through the Q sweat, deep breathing, Valsalva, so we would have already had our baseline for that. If we didn't, depending upon the protocol, either five or 10 minutes, sometimes up to 20 in the supine position. Um, then what we would do is we would tilt that uh, bed up to 70 degrees, monitor that heart rate and blood pressure for five minutes or 10 minutes, depending upon the um, referring indication. Um, typically what we use for those, uh, just as a guide, would be orthostatic intolerance would be a 10 minute tilt, POTS and anybody under the age of 18. Um, otherwise, most of the other referrals that we get, unless it's specifically marked, would just be a five minute tilt. Now, we, go ahead. We normally take blood pressures at one minute and four minutes and the baseline, um, just to know what we're doing right before we tilt them up. And then once we've tilted them, we'll take them at 30 seconds, one, two, three minutes, and then five minutes, seven, nine, depending upon how long that tilt is. Then we'll return the patient back to supine, let them rest for three minutes. And normally we would take one blood pressure before we release them just to be sure that if there was any abnormalities that they're back to baseline um, before they go out the door. The reason we are taking the manual blood pressures is we, we tend to not rely on the continuous blood pressure monitoring for the absolute pressures. Um, as Tony just mentioned to me, she's getting 120 or something. We are reading here over 150. This is really not meant to be an absolute blood pressure recording for you. This shows trends over time, and it shows particularly short-term trends, like for the Valsalva one, it's perfect for that. But to get the actual blood pressure for the analysis of if someone has orthostatic hypotension or not, I would never rely on this. I always go with the manual blood pressures. So, like, when I'm in the lab, um, especially if we're doing a drug study, and we want to see the change. Um, I, we also try to get them to match, though. So I palpated um, his pressure, and I palpated it at 118. But he says he's really cold. Yep. So again, it's um, that can make you basically constrict your hands. His hands are. And one of the other things, one of the other things that we can do with this device as well is we can actually retake an upper arm cuff and just see if maybe this thing has drifted due to the Valsalva maneuver from him standing up and sitting down. It could have moved a little bit on his finger. Um, so I'm just going to go do that and see if um, we can actually get a little bit closer of a blood pressure here for him. And I think, I mean, he's like ice. He warmed up both hands and, you know, he should have like a nice blanket over his toes. And stuff. Yeah, I mean, you can take from to the Well, no, in our lab, we keep at 78 degrees, um, so room temperature is extremely important for these reasons. So it's recalibrating, and he's actually showing now 135 over 77. This is where two technicians are extremely important for the head-up tilt. Um, we would have one person with our clipboard who's making note of the manual blood pressures and at the same time recording what's coming from the device so that we can compare the two. And we also are writing down the heart rate, any symptoms. One technician is really taking the blood pressures and watching the patient to make sure that we're not seeing you know, skin color changes or visual cues that we might pick up on that the patient is starting to feel a blood pressure drop. Well, the other technician is really responsible for writing down the values and being sure we're collecting the data that we need to. They're also normally the ones that are controlling the foot pedal or the, the um, remote control to tilt the table up and down as well. So this can get to be kind of a hectic time, um, especially when you're noticing that huge blood pressure drop in these OH patients and you're wanting to collect the information as fast as you can but also want to be as safe as possible uh, for the the patient so so it's important like sometimes we um, you know can you come in and do the foot pedal I have a problem with that because if one of us are taking blood pressures and the blood pressures are 60 over 40 and they're white but they don't know that they don't have symptoms you need this person over here to know a blood pressure pattern just as well as the person taking the blood pressures because they also need to know when to make that decision when you're trying to palpate or get a blood pressure. And if they, if they see the heart rate, everything drop down, they need to be able to go back. They need to know that. 
So there you can nicely see now where it took the calibration. Oops. Um, it cut off the circulation there for a few seconds, uh, and then that's where the recalibration occurred. So that's the, the current in, in more accurate blood pressure now. And as far as I'm concerned, we can go ahead. And okay. So normally, like I said, we'd be having a clipboard, taking things down. Um, and again, the table would normally come up, but we're going to go ahead and make a mark and ask Jade to stand up. Okay. Go that way. Put your arm up again. Keep it at heart level. Can you press that heart Just imagine down? that fancy tilt table going up now. <laughs> yeah, and with an arm out. But if they have Oop. a Hold. problem, you can always put it here. You okay, Jade? Okay. It depends. It did on here, but again, he he had a really high blood pressure coming into it, and we knew based off the manual that that wasn't accurate. So one way to do that is to do that cuff. Now, I have a feeling it's due to mainly due to probably some vasoconstriction going on because it's cold. Um, and again, most of these blood pressure devices are very sensitive to vasoconstriction. Um, so that's where the rice pack, the water heaters, the um, I've, I've actually used exam gloves and put a little uh, heater in the palm. Uh, these devices will read through a standard um, latex glove, um, or at least they used to. Um, I've tried it with the blue and the um, uh, just the regular standard latex. It will not work on the purple, or at least the last time I tried, they did not work on those thick um, chemo gloves that were purple, um, but they did go through the blue. I got 142 or 82. Um, so if you're, especially if you're doing a re or any study, if they have a nice feet of press in that and then as the study goes on, your feet of press starts going up, ask them if they have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know how many times you get all through this and then ready for the tilt and the blood, the feet of press is way up and well, even their blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with those MSA patients. Oh, MSA, yep. So you can see the right hand corner up there, I took a blood pressure and I, I started at 40 seconds because if they have an OH, it can take you a long time to get it. But I finished his by one minute and then three, mm -hmm. uh, three minutes or whatever. We do uh, what? One, we do three, one, two, five. three, five. But again, that should be standardized based off of your protocol within your institution. Um, everybody seems to be just a little bit different on how often they want blood pressures taken. Um, some want them every minute, others don't, so. If the patient's stable, we might miss, we might skip one as well. Like if uh, we're doing a 10 minute tilt and they're stable at five minutes and there's been no change, there might not be a reason for us to take that five minute blood pressure, so. 122 over 88. And we're, we're close, we're within and he's the 10. Like I took three of them the last time. You, you weighed a little bit between them, but he was keep <coughs> oscillating. And stuff so if you're going to do a pot, you know, if you do one, it might be here, but the next time it might be there with her. Some something else that maybe worth pointing out is that uh, what you're seeing there. Can you pull that down again, David? Yep. Right, right after he stood up, there's this transient blood pressure drop. That is really in the, in, the, in the tachycardia associated with it. That's really something you only see or predominantly see with active standing. This is the difference between head up tilt and active standing. It's the first half minute. Other, after that, they're pretty much the same. Um, but that is, is much more pronounced when someone actively stands up. Any other questions while we're waiting on this next minute before he sits back down? Not always, no. They use phenopress. Well, we've, we, we do have a phenop, we've used phenopress products, we've used the CNAP products, um, we've evaluated all the different blood pressure devices out there. 
Um, and that's why I say each one's a little different. Um, and so I really encourage you to go talk to the vendors to find out from them specifically what is different in their technology, because each one has a little bit difference of a technology. Um, for us, though, we're so used to looking at uh, one manufacturer's device that that's kind of what we're used to, to dealing with and seeing. So I'm going to defer your questions for CNAP to Ron and Walter or to WR Medical, um, <laughs> if you don't mind. But in general, if you take an overall average, um, you will see higher systolic and slightly lower diastolic blood pressures with those devices that record from the finger, simply because you look at the, the, the pulse wave ref reflection from a peripheral artery rather than from the central artery that we're really interested in. And again, it, dep it just depends. Sometimes it's low, sometimes it's high. Um, we don't always use the upper arm cuff calibration with our devices. We just put it on and go, and then we will adjust our height temperature and things that way as well. So um, it, it really is going to depend upon your setup and, and how you're doing things. Does the CNAP have a height control uh, device and if not, a height correction device and if not, why not? I cannot answer that. That would be a great question for the vendor. Now, for our purposes, we're keeping everything at heart level, either by an arm sling or by using an arm board with our tilt table testing. So we are not as, we don't use the height correction units that even come with some of the other devices out there because we're doing it manually for the device. You know when you have your arm hanging to your side for any prolonged period of time, you feel there's some pooling going on into your, into your veins, right, just with your legs. And I'm personally concerned that this influences the volume clamp that we're working with here for, to detect the blood pressure. That's why I will not accept um, the height correction devices that are out there. I, I like to see the arm out at heart level. That way I know I, I keep the same position. Um, I keep it at heart level and I get the most precise reading I can. That too. That too. Yes. Yes. I don't, I don't see a sense in those. All the tables have armrests these days. Why not? We also don't use a lot of the calibrated signals either, right? So we're not actually correcting for an upper arm cuff on a lot of our stuff because we are controlling all these variables that are confounding that they're trying to make the device work better for. That Truthfully, the technician, if they're, if they're savvy and know what they're doing and what to look for, they're going to be able to probably over, be able to correct these things better than the device can at a lot of times. Any more questions on the testing part? Yeah? Yeah, uh, it's, it's really the, the muscle pump that you're activating and you, you get a little bit more venous pooling as a result initially and then the blood pressure goes back and then that's where it stays. And again, it's been shown that after 30 seconds, uh, there's really no difference between active and passive standing. It's, it's the first 30 seconds that are different. All right. Yeah? For the balsam law, which uh, measurement is more accurate, like the systolic blood pressure or the <laughs> So for... Mm -hmm. For interpreting the phases, the different phases, um, we heavily rely on the mean blood pressure. Um, the way, however, pressure recovery time was defined and then normative values derived, that is systolic blood pressure. 